How did the cast of Bridgerton film the spicy scenes? Did you know which scene was the only candid one in the show? And what did the star Simone Ashley need to learn before the start of filming? Keep watching to find out all the secrets behind making season two of Bridgerton. Filming tricks. The infamous spicy scenes from season one got the whole world tuning in. Bridgerton's portrayal of these scenes shook up the filming world as no one imagined the creators of the series would go so far. However, all of it came to life thanks to a professional intimacy coordinator that of course was present for this season as well. Many fans and critics were actually questioning the lack of the intimate scenes as compared to the first season. Season 2 exchanged prolonged bed scenes for hush whispers and tense glances between the main pair. The fans hungry for the spicy Cathany scenes also got what they were waiting for, as the two couldn't resist each other during one night in the garden. Filming these kinds of scenes have to be practiced beforehand, like choreography. The actors need to know where to position their limbs and exactly what the next move will be. Simone Ashley spoke about filming these scenes, I am confident that I can speak up if I'm not feeling comfortable with anything on set. We were in a very safe environment and we worked with an incredible intimacy coordinator who encouraged us to portray what it is for the female character to experience pleasure. These scenes can be tricky to film, as every scene is very strategic. Jonathan Bailey revealed a few tricks and unexpected props that helped them while filming. He said, There are new tricks to the trade, little cushions, and it's amazing what you can do with a half-inflated netball. If there are two people doing an intimate scene, the rule is they must have three barriers separating them, and there are certain acts where a half-inflated netball can allow for movement without having to connect physically. Even though there are far less spicy scenes compared to season 1, it seems like Bridgerton truly upped its game when it comes to filming them. Extreme Bridgerton Boot Camp Every role needs a proper preparation, but it's the Bridgerton ones that are way harder than you would expect. The leads from both of the seasons spoke about how many challenges they had to face. Getting the role is easy compared to the training that comes later on. Simone Ashley, who plays Kate Sharma in the show, spoke about her getting into the Bridgerton swing in an interview. It wasn't a long audition process, it all happened so quickly. Within two weeks, I was auditioning for the role of Kate, I self-taped, met Johnny Bailey, and then I got the part. Before I knew it, I was in wig fittings and at horse riding training. Even the stars of the previous season, Phoebe Dynavor and Regé Jean Page, said that the boot camp of transforming into high class of the Regency era is pretty hard. Simone Ashley mentioned that the most challenging aspect for her was horse riding. She revealed in an interview that she did a boot camp for riding a horse. I had to learn so fast that the fear kicked me in the arse. Even if you're scared, you have to overcome this. It was a big confidence builder, and I really enjoyed it. Well, Simone ended up loving horse riding so much that those scenes where she and her co-star, Jonathan Bailey, were riding their horses became the dearest one to her. Those were some of my favorite days filming on set with Johnny, and just bringing this love story to life with him. It really, truly was a joy. Besides that and tedious wardrobe fittings, she had to attend hours of dancing lessons and even did an accent training to make the character of Kate picture perfect. Her co-star, Jonathan, didn't have it exactly easy either, compared to his responsibilities last season. Last year, I was at the back of the shot, sipping lemonade and giggling with my on-screen brothers during the ball scenes. This time, I had to focus. But when we finally stepped out into the dance floor, it did feel like a performance. The two spent weeks of dance training for the final cuts to be perfect. They even shared little snippets of dance practices on spontaneous dance parties. Jonathan also commented, I think the dance scenes and the scenes help propel the narrative forward, and you can see the relationships change as characters dance together. Even from behind the scenes, it's visible how incredible the chemistry is between the main stars of the show. Long filming hours first season was all about Daphne, while season two revolved around Anthony. Jonathan Bailey revealed that the biggest help this season to be the perfect leading Bridgerton was none other than his on-screen sibling, Phoebe Dynavor. He said, Phoebe was great at counseling me, because it's not something you can explain to your friends and family, who you don't see for weeks on end. Filming after the success of the first season and during a pandemic made it particularly intense. Phoebe's tips included to get fit, eat healthy, and get as much sleep as possible, as the filming hours tend to last from 14 to 15 hours. Jonathan wrote it all down in a notebook, creating a Bridgerton guide for the next sibling who plays the lead. Incredible how the on-screen siblings are handing down advice, just like real-life siblings. Fake Places Bridgerton is beautiful to look at, with the dazzling ball halls, gorgeous houses, and breathtaking English countryside. For this, the crew used a mix of on-set locations and a build studio. The on-set locations had special times when they could be used for filming, especially the place where the first ball of season two was filmed, Great Conservatory at Scion House in West London. This place is very close to the Heathrow Airport, so the cast had to film it in the middle of the night to avoid the scenes getting ruined by planes flying over their heads. The magnificent wisteria-covered exterior Bridgerton house is a ranger's house in Greenwich. Did you know that the Wisteria is actually not there? The supervising location manager Paul Tomlinson described how it came to life. 
The biggest process was adding the wisteria to the front of the property, which involved constructing a temporary frame upon which the wisteria was attached. The inside scenes are actually filmed at an old Royal Air Force Halton station. The same station is also the place where Featherington's dinner scenes get filmed. Another house we looked at a lot this season was Lady Danbury's house. The exterior of this house is a Holborn Museum of Art located in Bath. If the crew couldn't find or get to a particular spot, they had a purpose-built studio in Uxbridge. This wasn't all, as the Bridgerton had its own warehouse for all the important costumes. More than 700 costumes were created for season two, and out of that, 146 were used just in the first episode. Sophie Canelli, the mastermind behind the costumes this season, revealed, For me, the beauty of design is always in the attention to detail. The most anticipated scene If there was one scene that the book author Julia Quinn insisted on putting in the script, it was the infamous Paul Mall scene. It's a game played between the Bridgerton siblings and the Sharma sisters, where Anthony and Kate go toe-to-toe -to -toe in their competitiveness. The scene was loved both by the author and the fans, so the showrunners had no reason not to include it in the show. Shonda Rhimes, one of the showrunners, expressed in an interview, For me, the Paul Mall scene had to be in there. We really needed to see that game and that moment. Chris Van Dusen, other showrunner, added, It's really this fun, ruckus game full of only the best and sharpest Bridgerton banter, played in this lush, beautiful English countryside in the shadow of this amazing estate. Who wouldn't fall in love with a scene like that? And they translated the scene on our screens perfectly, because the scene was so much fun to watch. And it turns out, it really was completely candid. Chris explained, There was a point when we just set up the cameras and let our actors play. Honestly, it was the first and only time there's been improvisation on set, and we even used some of it. The stars of the series often mention the scene as their favorite they filmed this season. Jonathan brought it up in an interview. It took a few days to shoot. We had the most amazing weather and it was just ridiculous and silly. As we all know, the Bridgertons are a very competitive bunch, and so is Kate, so it's a great way to see them all interact. This scene was so important for the fans because a key bonding moment happens between Kate and Anthony. As they both get wrapped up in the game, they forget their worries behind and just let loose a bit. They end up falling in mud, and laughing together allows them to let their facade slip for a while. It was one of the first stepping stones that would later lead to the epic romance. When talking about the best player of Palma from the cast, everyone agreed on Luke Thompson, who plays Benedict Bridgerton. Special Editing Spot the pandemic changed a lot when it came to making and producing TV shows. All of the cast and crew were constantly getting tested, and the filming hours were closely panned out. Editing the show was even trickier. TV series are usually edited in big fancy studios full of people. However, Bridgerton was being edited at the peak of the pandemic, so some drastic changes needed to be done. Chris Van Dusen, Bridgerton showrunner, said, A lot of the show was edited in my basement. Due to the pandemic, we did all the editing virtually. Chris mentioned that by editing at home, he had some special help from his four-year-old kid and 18-month-old twins. I knew that if they would dance to the orchestral pop songs that we were doing, that I knew that those songs were keepers. With the show looking incredible and the songs being immediately added to our playlist, it's safe to say Chris did an amazing job despite the complicated conditions. Are there any other secrets that we forgot to mention? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching!